Hey, what's up everybody? Rob here from Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. So lately I've uh, been wanting to do a video where I show you guys how to do some of this texture. And I shared this work on um, you know, various things, DVNR, uh, social media, and people said, wow, great texture. Uh, it looks like it took you a long time. I said, well, the whole piece took about six hours, actually under six hours. And a few people seemed pretty impressed with that. Uh, I think that they, they assume that I'm painting every bit of this texture. And although I'm doing a lot of overpainting to it, I utilize textures and build up upon them. So I'm going to show you that today. Uh, so let's switch over here. I've already got this started by creating a, uh, uh, a selection, saving the selection as a convert to selection layer. That gives you this right here. Just did this so it would expedite things a little bit. Threw in a background color. I actually did a warm up, but I don't want to show you that. I want to show you the what we're going to do. So what I'm going to do is pick a... Uh, a middle tone green. I guess it doesn't really need to be, but I like to start a little bit desaturated uh, because I tend to oversaturate anyways. So uh, something in the mid tone so that I can see the uh, dark to light as it builds up. So I'm going to work off layers at first just to show you uh, how you can utilize these to make the process a little bit easier. So some people like to work off, um, actually I'll just call this uh, shadows. Uh, some people like to work off one layer because they're better at, you know, knowing how to work the brushes and things like that. And other people need layers to aid them in the process. So I'll start here, but if you're more advanced, you can just use one layer, I guess. So what I like to do here is just uh, initially start off with uh, a big shadow. So, oh, not that. That's something we're going to add that later. Uh, like a shadow like this at the multiply. Um which really I'm using this as a separate layer so you can set it to normal and you can adjust multiply over here. Remember that there's blending modes in this particular software for both the uh, the brushes and the layers which is highly effective uh, for doing this. So what I'll do here is just start with an initial soft airbrush and um, paint in a light source. And because I'm using a separate layer I can bump back the opacity when needed, things like that. And then I will add in another layer and uh, I'll just call this texture one or T1 just to keep the typing to a minimal. Uh, and I will set this to multiply as well. And I'll go to this droplet brush. These are brushes that all come with Clip Studio. I'm gonna be using a couple custom brushes, but if I use some custom brushes that you, you know, can't emulate, just remember you can pull textures from everything around you, everything from rocks and tree bark and uh, pictures of elephant skin, you know, and I don't think uh, that's, copyrightable. I don't think you can copyright elephant skin or whatever. So, but anyways, you can just uh, utilize that stuff for your own textures. So you don't have to have a brush to do it, but brushes just make it nice because you can adjust some of the variables. Like for instance, if I want these little uh, droplets to be different sizes, it's pretty easy in the software to adjust the particle size and I get a smaller variation of that. Something like that. And I might want, you know, some to be a little bit less opaque and then some to be more visible. So I could push this way back, add a new layer, uh, you know, put in some more, Maybe bump up the opacity of these a little bit so they appear more vividly. And you see that alone gives kind of an illusion of depth. And again, I can still bump up the shadows more here as well. I'll just play around with these, let's call this T2. And it's really building up this texture to where you can start to see ideas and you can start to feel like it's more, um, you know, dimensional basically. So I'm going to bump this up one more time. Get a couple of these really large ones like that. Just feel like for reptile skin, we should have a lot of little imperfections. Okay. And while I'm here, I'm going to do a little bit with this other one. Let's see if this is what I'm looking for. Oh, let's set the color dodge. Make sure that's set to normal or multiply. Let's try multiply. Whoa, okay, that's a bit harsh. Let's tone that back. Really bumping down that particle size. There we go, something like that. So noise patterns are great for skin. So lots of little dots, lots of little, you know, we, we kind of think that skin is smooth and it's really not. It's got a lot of little imperfections, a lot of blemishes. And then reptile skin, right? It's going to be even more uh, set with imperfections and, and all kinds of wild stuff, wild details. So we want to really, you know, kind of overdo it and then maybe pull back. So let's say something like that for now. I feel like maybe a few more of these larger ones. 
but maybe at a lower opacity. Uh, and figures about oh, brush density right there. There we go. And again, I really like to, to mix this up, play around with it. I feel like the shadow can be all the way up. I'm not liking the color of that shadow. But I'll, I'll mess with that some more. So we've got a couple base textures. Another one that I want needs to show more separation of, um, you know, like a reptile skin to me is going to have like more segmentation going on, right? So you could draw this in. Uh, now, if you are going to draw this in, probably want a higher brush opacity. Uh, I tend to use the darker pencil brush for something like this. And if you're going to draw this in, there's a couple ways you could think about it. You could just kind of swirl back and forth and crisscross. At first, it's, it's going to look a bit weird. Uh, until you figure out the pattern okay so you know what you're looking for is a crisscrossing uh, to make these kind of scales um, so that's one way to do it. I just want to show you a quick way so you can do it like that or you can painstakingly get in here and say no I know exactly what scale the scales I want look like I'm gonna draw them in okay so this is gonna take a longer uh, longer time to accomplish it's gonna take longer to accomplish I said that word didn't I um, but maybe it gives you more of the result you're looking for. Maybe you're looking at a picture of scales and then instead of transferring the uh, layer, which would be the easier way, you just take the scales, distort them over this and uh, set it to multiply. Make sure to use a grayscale layer of that and you're going to get exactly what you're looking for. Or you can use a brush and that's really how I made this brush. Uh, I can go to something like, uh, let's pick monster skin yeah monster skin okay so with this one I can go across here and I can go like this and you see it's a lot faster to give me at least this kind of idea of what scales might look like it doesn't really look like scales yet but it gives me a pattern to work from and again I'm gonna set this to multiply I want to make sure this is set to a more of a black yeah something like that and I've also got this set where it's a lighter opacity based upon how hard I bear down that actually works against what I'm trying to do right here. So I'm going to bear down pretty hard on this and get the opacity that I want like this and then play around with the opacity slider over here because I want some of that other texture to show through obviously. Uh, but what I'm trying to do here is really give myself reference for the overpainting process. So now that I've got a lot of this in place, I can start making some other decisions. So um, Personally, I'm probably just going to take this one, merge this together with Command E. Um, I'm going to overpaint right now like this. I'm going to add a layer over top, call this overpaint. And so this is how I, you know, basically did all this right here. Okay, so I get enough of this in place to where it basically gives me ideas. It presents ideas to me. Now, it doesn't do all the work for you, or, and I wouldn't want it to. I want to still be creative in this process and come up with some artwork, right? I want to paint some of my own artwork. So what I do here is I start to pick this apart. Let me rotate this. So I'm going to go with the light source being on this one side of what I would consider scales at this point. And then I'm going to paint this in. Uh, I like using a little bit more of a solid brush at first. Now, depending on what I'm doing, I might blend some of this back. Oh, something like this. And you see I'm, I'm using the information that's in front of me to basically find these ideas. So something like that. And what I tend to do is I, I could do this where I paint everything on this one layer. You know, the, the more I get into the painting, the more I will start to do that. I'll start to paint everything new on this one layer um, and then I'll try to like find some of these scales and, and I'm adding a drop shadow to one side a highlight to the other and sometimes I'll get a bit messy about it because I, I don't want it to appear like a uh, generated texture so I need to kind of mess it up a bit as I go and it seems slow at first but you start to pick up speed and I, like I said, you can really cheat this and go right for grabbing textures from animals and things like that. Uh, you know, elephant skin comes to mind, lots of you know, rhino skin, things like that. And you can really just drop that in. 
Um, but what tends to happen, I feel that by the end of it, you don't have this look that it's all hand created. It's this part that adds that. So for me, I like doing the overpainting. And so let's say that, you know, that's the start of it right there, right? And now you got a couple options here. This looks too overly generated or whatever, too solid. Uh, I'd probably just blur this a bit, but I need to get most of this in place first and then do that. So let me, let me continue to paint this in. I think what I'm going to do too, just to speed this up, is uh, try to copy and paste this and uh, maneuver it around. But what I want to do is make sure that it doesn't look copy and pasted. So, so let's see here. Let's get enough of this in place. See how they start to kind of make sense. It's it's like they're, there's enough of that idea in front of you to where it becomes easier and easier to create more of this. So let's say that, I just want to make sure I don't miss any specific areas. Let's say that this is enough right there, okay? So enough of these little highlights and shadows. Let's, you know, work back from a distance here. Let's uh, hit Command D to deselect, Alt with drag. I can move these into place. Kind of, uh, I want to use a mesh transformation. Where is that sucker? I don't use it a lot on this one. Mesh transformation. And I could just pull these to the side. This is a good way to make sure the pattern uh, looks independent from, you know, again, a copy and paste. So you can just kind of flip these around a bit, squeeze them to the side. Randomize them a bit. Oh, I can't stand this tool, though. It's like if you just miss one of these points, it moves the whole thing, which is kind of annoying. All right, so there we go. There's that. Hit Enter. And then repeat that process. So let's drag that over, hold Alt, drag it over to, let's get this area right here. Kind of line up anyways, which is good. Again, edit, transform, mesh transformation. Bring it in on the, uh, the end of this sphere. Something like that. Okay, let's hit Command E, merge these together, and repeat this process. So again, it picks up speed because you know you start to utilize this texture in different ways. Um, now you can do this as a square, which makes more sense. I'm making this a little bit more difficult than it needs to be, but it's not a big deal. Like I could really just kind of do this, hold Alt, keep dragging it around. If it overlaps a little bit, it's not going to kill it. Might even randomize it a little bit more, which is what we want. Look, it all just starts fitting together. It's like a big old puzzle. I love puzzles. All right, so let's see here. Actually, let's go back to our selection. Click that little bad boy, Command-Shift-I. Go back to the overpaint, hit Delete. Command-D to deselect. Hold Alt again. Just fill in a couple of these little areas here. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. All right, Command E. And let's see, I just need that little piece there. I could probably, here's a little trick for you. Just select the little area you need, like that. Then move your selection over to here. Then grab the Move tool, move that back. Bow. Easy peasy. All right, you can really just repeat that. Heck, uh, oh no, I don't need to Command Merge it because it already did that. Move the selection to here. Move tool. I think I use this move tool. Look at that. Oh, Clip Studio, you never cease to amaze me. Oh, you guys are like, is he talking to the software? This is creepy. All right, Command Shift I, delete. Nope. Delete. There we go. And then, and actually, I'm going to do this. I'm going to hit Command X. Come on. Command X. Oh, Command Shift I again. 
goodness. Command X, Command V. The reason being, if you take this layer here and you forget about it, there's all these little pieces everywhere and just delete that. So by cutting and pasting the middle, I've isolated that area. Okay, so there's our texture. It took a little bit to get there, right? You guys are probably like, dude, this is taking too long. It gets faster, folks. You just have to bear with me. So it does look a little bit flat. I'm not too impressed with that, but uh, I've got some options here now. I can blend back the opacity, but what's really going to make this look more accurate, I'm going to make a copy of it just so I can dink around without messing anything up. I'm going to take my soft airbrush, set to transparent, so basically just a soft eraser would be fine. And um, so soft erase, and I'm going to erase this texture back. I want it to be apparent almost everywhere, but I want it to be a lot less apparent in the shadows of it okay and i could probably play with the blending mode as well yeah but i can't do multiply it really since i painted the highlights and the shadows all in one i'm gonna have to use the uh the actual opacity of the layer and that's why you see me erasing it and don't be afraid to erase right through the middle as well so what you want to really think about is that textures are pretty non uh conformed or i think the best way to say that they're they're random uh, you know very randomized so certain areas are more visible certain areas are almost not visible at all so you, you you want some of that randomized effect and you're going to get that by being okay with erasing and painting right through the middle of certain areas so notice how the more i brush this back erase this back the more it starts to uh, appear more realistic in a sense you know it's still far from realistic but it's uh it's getting there and you know, you just have to use your eyes. So if something looks out of place, erase it back. And and that's why I made this backup layer. So you can see the difference from going from that to that. A lot more uh, believable, I would say. And then I yeah, still need to get a lot of these little lines out of it. It just looked too much like lines. Now notice the, the, the areas that look uh, kind of the weirdest, <laughs> the highlights and the shadows. So... You generally don't see highlights in the shadows. You, you might get a glimpse of a, a texture or a light source, but it's, it's definitely not going to be anywhere near as evident as it is in the, the light source, even in the midtones. So that's why I'm having to erase a lot of this back um, to make it you know, read. So yeah, I'm just kind of playing around with that. A lot of this looks a bit weird, but it's starting to get there. So just like that, we have a little bit more dimensional vibe now we can backtrack this a little bit and you know again playing with the opacity slider there i think i merged all that together right so yeah so basically like about about like that is where we're at and then um probably at this stage of the work i would start to overpaint again but now what i would do is start to you know incorporate even more like a variety of blemishes so let's do this let's add another layer go back to overpainting you want to try different brushes as well. I'm, I'm typically just using this darker pencil because I want people to be able to follow along as much as possible. Uh, but you really want to play around with, um, you know, different brushes. The other thing that you can do as well, let me show you this. You hold shift, grab all these. Actually, I'm going to create a group first, forgive me. Drag those into the group. Condense that down. Right click, duplicate layer, which is really going to duplicate the group. And I'm going to right click here and merge selected layers. It's going to put all that together. I still have my backups if I need them, but I have all of this together and I have my selection up here. So it's, you know, very editable. It's very, uh, it sounds like I'm saying edit, editable. It's not edible, it's editable. Um, so now what I could do is I can overpaint right here. I don't think I put anything on there. And I can add even more imperfection. So another thing I like to do is just kind of throw in some, um, little bumps or something right so now if i did this in a different order i'd probably see more of these little bumps but i'm just going to draw i'm going to draw these in so i'm drawing the light source of the little bump and then i will go back through and draw the shadow the little bump so it just puts this on top of the already texturized surface pretty easy to do now the other thing you can do with this is blur these a little bit right so I'm gonna do this with the background as well but I want to I want to get enough of this texture in. the blur is generally gonna make it read uh, 
you know, like, like more realistically. Okay, so if, if I go back, they just look like some little pimples. I can play around with the opacity here. I actually like them more visibly like this. And then also I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna blur this. Gaussian blur, six pixels, just a little bit. So that if I hit Command Z, Command Z like that, and then I hit Command Y, you can see there's a pretty noticeable difference. If I hit it twice or three times, look how that just doesn't look real. But then as I go back, it starts to look real, especially from a distance. So you want to constantly blur things and uh, you know kind of test that as well. Now the neat thing about this software is it also has a pretty good blur brush right, where is this sucker? Oh, it's under the smudge brushes. Blur right here. So you can play around with the density of this and you can also blur just little areas of this. And again, you can randomize what areas you blur, what areas you don't. So it really helps to bring this all together. So like that, just kind of scribble around through there. Again, I just want a couple areas that are more affected. Okay. And then at this stage of the work, I can merge this all together and I can start to paint over top of all this with the blending mode. So I'm going to put my selection back in place. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to go to like a soft airbrush, set the multiply, and I'm just going to draw through here. See, it brings out some of that texture, it hides other parts. Like that. I'm also going to go back to the light source. And let's go to Color Dodge. So it kind of paints back the other way. Got a dual light source going in there. I can make the brush a lot smaller and I can start to add in you know, little bits of light source here and there. Now, the other thing to think about is skin and even reptile skin is specular in parts and pretty, you know, like oily or something like that. I don't know, but it's, uh, it's, it's got some noticeable specular areas. So that's what I want to do. I want to bring that out a little bit. So I want to put a little hot spot, let's say right here, and then check this from a distance. Yeah, it's starting to look a little bit more reptilian, I think. So I might play around with the way it catches the light in the shadows, a little sporadic. I think I liked it the other way though. And then also I might even, uh, you know, define a stronger light source to this one side. Uh, and I might add a um, little bit of blue in the shadows. So in this part, I'm gonna put, uh, let's see, probably color. Something like that. And then maybe, do, 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 I don't know, color dodge, glow dodge. So I, I jump around from these blending modes. I usually don't know what I, what I want until I see it. And, and then also I might colorize, uh, you know, because this looks ultimately like too green, too blue, right? So I might try to colorize some of the, uh, the green into maybe a little, I don't know, a little bit of blue. Or something entirely different, like a yellow or orange. Maybe a red. I don't know. I'm just going to experiment here. Yeah, something like that. It just gives it a little bit more to look at. Maybe that's a bit much. I tend to struggle with picking colors. But hopefully you can see that, you know, I, I don't know how long that took us. Let me see where we're at time-wise. Because it, it always seems like it's taking a while at first. Yeah, it was, I, was, I think we're into 20 minutes or something. So it, it does take a while, but... What happens is once you do this, you can really utilize this over and over. So for instance, I basically just created a terrestrial planet that looks like reptilian skin. But what happens is you can you can take this from one part of your painting and you can hold alt and drag it and drag it and drag it and duplicate and duplicate and duplicate. You know, so you can reuse it multiple times, uh, which you know, with some edits, because you'll go through and you know, it might look like this arm is all the same pattern, or hopefully it doesn't look that way. But what happened is I really did utilize parts of this over and over. Um, I can't really tell where because I overpainted on it long enough to where it kind of hides it. 
But that's essentially the process that you, you know, you see it's different than what I have here, but that's kind of the, the neat part about it as well. Since I'm overlaying randomized textures and I'm painting over the top, I get a little bit of uh, randomized and results. And that's what I want. I want it to generate ideas. I want it to make something that looks a little more hand painted. I don't want it to be so evident. And I think this is even a little too evident that it's a texture, but I don't want it to be like you look at it and go, oh yeah, he just photo bashed it. I mean, it is a form of photo bashing and there's nothing wrong with that, but I just want it to appear more hand generated. And I think that every time I do this, I tend to learn about textures and I tend to learn about patterns to where I can paint it more from uh, from memory anyway. So at any rate, hopefully this video has been informative for you. I know it's a bit of a long one as my some of my videos tend to be, but I hope you like the artwork. Let me know what you think about it as well as what you'd like to see in the future. If you have any questions, make sure to comment in the section below. More content's on the way very soon. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now.